Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. Today I want to present you a baby, a sweet baby, a, actually he's a big bad boy, a friend of mine. May I introduce him to you? Here we go, baby. JVC RC838. Boombox, ghetto blaster, go to it. Okay guys, here we are. So, let's start to take a look at the front of our uh, boombox, of our RC838. So let's start from the top. Here we can see there's a big, very nice, big display for all the different types of bands. We have that little LED over there that lights up when the signal is stereo. As you can see, we have a nice, very nice tuning knob, nice and heavy, nice and thick. Everything of this uh, boom box, of this model, is very high quality. I mean, most parts are in metal. You can just sense it. Um, coming around here on the edges, we have two condenser microphones, very nice. I also tried to make some recordings. I think the sound is very good for what they are. So, uh, and as we will see after, we also have some commands up, up, up above here. So it's, it's a fully recording machine. In fact, as you can see, we also have the VU meters, volume unit meters, which obviously help in doing that in recording. But as we know, if we click here, this button, not only this display uh, lights up, but it also tells us the amount, now it's not powered, it also tells us the amount of remaining battery if we're using batteries. Here instead we have the recording muting. If while we're recording with these two condenser mics, we can uh, just push this for a sec if we don't wanna record something very nice. Here we have the two tweeters. These are five centimeters tweeters, more or less two inch tweeters. As you can see, we have this famous special, I would say, grill that comes from the um, Star Wars movie. After the hype of the first Star Wars movie, a lot of, um, a lot of stuff implemented actually. Um, these features Star Wars like. In fact, here this grill imitates um, a, a specific window of the, of the front of the TIE Fighter, of the Imperial TIE Fighter. Very, very cool, I think. Here below, instead, we have the 16, more or less 6-inch woofers. The total um, output power of this is not that much, as you can imagine, but it's not that bad for this kind of boombox. It is 10 watts, 5 each. This is a, is a woofer, so it's not producing mid-range. All the mid and upper frequencies are delivered from the, from the tweeters, and in fact, I think you can, you can notice that pretty clearly. Although, you have a good uh, bass. That's, that's true. Um, here we have a special indicator, because this model had a special feature. We have the normal stereo that lights up when a stereo signal is produced. But if you want, here with this knob here, you can select mono, first of all, which I think it's cool. If you had some mono recordings, they can be reproduced correctly. Stereo, if you want, and then all the different normal stereo, or radio or tapes. Then we have the expanded uh, type of selection, where only these two light up. After we will take a look, obviously. I just want to give you a fast intro, which practically Mm, reproduces the, the signal more on the outside. It's giving you that sense of almost a, a fake surround. But it is lacking bass, unfortunately. So I, I, don't, I don't recommend it, actually. If you go all the way down with this, you go on the Biphonic selection, where all three turn light up. And that is for binaural type of recordings. So you're gonna use mainly your, um, your headphones when you have binaural uh, tapes. 
that's something very special that was uh, becoming big in that phase. This, as I said, is a 1979, was produced between 78 and 79, boombox. And um, in that period, uh, binaural recordings were something, I mean, starting to, 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 to get big. So that's a nice feature. Not that useful if you're using just the normal uh, output, I mean, without headphones. Uh, here we have the different levels and tuning, which correspond more or less to the view meters, but also to the equalizer of the binaural. Uh, if, you want, if you want a binaural equalization, you have to put it on off and select biphonic. I mean, you have different combinations, but let's just leave it on on so we can monitor it during uh, recording, obviously, but also during playback, the view meters, which obviously everyone, uh, one of us loves. Here we have our counter, which obviously it's not digital, but mechanical. Our eject button, a little slow, but working. Oh, obviously we have a lot of models, different types of versions of this. Mine is, a, let's say the basic version, but I know there's also a, a type of, uh, that is able, capable of reproducing metal cassettes, and it says metal here if you're interested in that. I don't think you're gonna, gonna reproduce metal cassettes on something like this, but you never know. As you can see, it has auto stop and all the different, the typical keyboard features uh, for, for commanding the tape and a little nice bar here to protect the buttons. Okay, so I turned around the, um, the boom box. On the left side here, we have the normal classic two pin power cable that you just put it directly in the wall. Here we have a voltage selector, which I think that is positive. You can use it in different parts of the world. And also very cool here, you have a 12 volt adapter, which you can connect it to the battery of your car. Because as we know, this is on the go machine, guys. People are gonna use this on the go, on the streets, in your car, wherever. Rarely at home, I would say, but also. Here instead, you can see there's just a, a, a little hole where you could connect a band, a, a belt, a, a strap to bring it out and about. Okay, so on the right side, which can vary from model to model, in this case, the um, model number L, letter L, it has different types of letters after the, the, the model number RC838 because it depends from where and which country was produced. So here in this case we have, as you can see, two inputs for some uh, microphones if we want. Here instead of the typical RCA inputs and outputs we have the REC PB uh, DIN, I don't have a cable, it should be uh, input and output. This substitutes the RCA inputs and outputs. But it depends, I, I think it's both ways, but it's surely, as you can see, for recording. Here, very cool, you can connect directly with uh, bulk speaker cables to a pair of, 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 of speakers if you want. JVC also released different kinds of components, also a pair of speakers expressly dedicated to this for a better listening at home and also to have that surround uh, effect if someone wanted. And here you can connect a pair of speakers going from 3.2 ohms mainly. In other models it goes all the way up to up ohms, but here I see only 3.2, so very, very low actually. Here, remember we're, we're in the 70s, you can directly connect a turntable. In fact, it also has here where you can connect the earth of your turntable and the normal inputs. This is, that means there is a phono preamp inside here because you can connect directly your uh, turntable. And uh, on the instructions it says it is expressly meant for a moving magnet type of cartridge. Here we have a 6.3 millimeter jack input for your headphones. And here we have this beat cut, different types of beats. What is this? Well, if you wanna record short wave broadcasts, short wave programs from radio, and sometimes there is this beat actually, 
Well, with this, you can practically cancel that. It has different three types of beats, and with that, it's very easy. So you can uh, cancel that effect and have a, a good, nice, uh, fluid recording. So here on the back, we have the classic two antennas for optimal uh, radio reception. Here, you can also connect an external antenna. Very cool to go really uh, distant. Here we have the electro specifications. As you can see, it is a double voltage. Here instead, as you can imagine, we can fit eight D cell batteries. This guy is already 8.1 kilos. If you put also eight batteries, I don't know how people were supposed to bring this out and about, but they sure did. I mean, there's a famous photo of Cool, cool J bringing this on his shoulder. Here's a pic, very cool. Okay guys, now let's take a look on top of this bad boy. So starting from here, we have this small knob, which is for fine tuning. What is this? This is for precisely selecting the program reproduced on short wave bands. As you can see, we have different kinds of bands, which now it's very difficult to find. But in this case, we have practically everything. We have three bands for the short waves, which traveled, I mean, from one country to another, even one continent to another. They go very, very far. Then we have long waves. This was especially something developed and um, available in Europe, in North Africa, and places like that. It goes around 2,000 kilometers. Pretty good, but not that much. Then we have middle waves, which um, go, it's, it, they're not that, uh, they don't go that far. Their reception isn't that good. It's more from a, a local, we could say, broadcast. And then the classical frequency modulation, FM radio. Okay, so here we start to have all our different selections and knobs. On the top, we have the recording selection where it can be set to auto or manual. This is mainly for the uh, input level. Instead, if you want to do it by yourself using the built-in condenser mics, you can use these in order to determine the volume, the level of the input. Here instead, as you can see, you can select your turntable, the phono, the DIN input that we saw before, or the radio, or the standby and tape selection here. Here we have selections for the bias, that's for recording, normal cassettes, or uh, as you can see, chrome. We do not have metal, as I said before. This is for the playback, the equalization, normal or chrome again. Here we have a balance for left and right speakers. Here instead we have the equalization for the bass and treble. Uh, as you have noted, maybe, we do not have any Dolby here. But in the instructions it says, reasonably, to put the level of the treble a little below zero. In that way you will compensate a little bit when you're reproducing, when you're playing Dolby cassettes. Now this is maybe one of the only true downsides of this model. It does not have any type of noise reduction. Not because we want noise reduction for, for, for specific reasons for recording or because it's the best solution. No, because a lot of pre-recorded cassettes are uh, encoded in Dolby. So that's something useful sometimes. In any case, for the quality, the general quality, having this, the possibility to regulate treble, that's perfect. Here we have this generous, huge volume knob which goes up and down, and that's it. Okay, now, before testing it, I just wanted to give you a few specs of this baby boy. So, um, if you're wondering the frequency response, it's not gonna be amazing. It says in the instructions that the frequency response goes from 45 to 12 kilohertz with normal tape, uh, with chrome tape, it goes all the way from 40 hertz all the way up to 13 kilohertz, which isn't that bad. I mean, it's it's a decent frequency response. Um, wow and flutter are pretty good. This is something, uh, a positive uh, aspect of this model, because according to JVC, it's only 0 0.07, which is pretty bad for a deck. But for this, I ensure you assure you that is it's a good. It's a good measurement. And in fact, I do think that the transport is pretty good. The signal to noise ratio in general for this 
model is 50 db. Decent? I would say decent, not bad at all. Okay, so first of all, let's try now to turn on the radio. Just a little bit, otherwise we're gonna be uh there are gonna be copyright issues. Sotto costo. Nei ipermercati Carrefour e nei Carrefour Market è sotto costo qualità. La qualità ha un prezzo ancora più buono. È stato l'eroe della finale di me. sia per, le, per la sedia a rotelle ma anche per René Zellweger e Judy so as you can see here we're, we're talking Italian you know I'm mainly Italian I live in Italy that's why we're, we're listening or hearing mainly Italian radio station let's try now just briefly the other types of, of waves of bands <laughs> sono gli strumenti disponibili dai semplici sensori che si collegano a veri e propri seggiolini moderni e tecnologici e molto these are mid medium medium waves ne per i baby trasportati dal collegamento con lo smartphone all'app dedicata long waves Nothing there. Short waves. Well, I guess we didn't find that much on the other types of waves, but that's normal. I mean, no, very few people now still communicate that way. Okay, so now it's time to listen to a cassette. Then after listening this way, I'm gonna connect it with the, to the headphones and I'm gonna let you listen a little bit of radio and a little bit of cassette. So, for our test, we're gonna try, listen to this cool cassette from Jerry Frankie, or Frank, Radio Jackson, very cool. Indie, completely indie production. You can find it on Bandcamp. I'll put the link, I think it's a very cool production. As you can see, even the cassette is very nice. Obviously, it's a type one. Let's listen. I already put the treble and the bass in the right position. Let's hear. Let's try now with the cable. We're a winner anyway. Right on. Right on.
Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this brief tour about my baby, the RC838. As you probably know, JVC was the best of the best, was the to-go brand for boomboxes in the 70s and 80s. So I highly recommend if you want to get one of these, obviously there are other great uh, brands like even National Panasonic, but JVC had a little umph, a little something special to it, and we, as we all know. So like for the models M60, M90, which are even better than, than the one I presented, Mine is very old, actually. As I said, it's 1979. When I was born, that's also a connection I want with my, with my boombox. So, please, write down here your comments. Let me know which boombox you have, which boombox you think is the best of the best. If you're still using them, what, where are you using them? What are you doing with them? I'm interested. This is something cool. I'm, I'm glad this is coming back. Thanks to cassettes. Also, boomboxes are coming back, guys. Okay, guys, thank you again. And remember... Music is born analog. Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.